In 1982, I was in a tragic mountain climbing accident and suffered frostbite to my legs. After months of effort, my medical team gave up the fight to save my biological limbs, and they were amputated. Today, nothing biological is touching the ground surface. I'm supported by Bionix. Six microprocessors, 24 sensors, and muscle tendon-like actuators. I'm basically a bunch of nuts and bolts from the knee down. My name is Hugh Herr, I'm an MIT professor, and I invented these Bionic limbs. With Bionics, I am no longer disabled. I can run, dance, and skip. Sadly, sophisticated Bionic technology, such as I use, is not pervasive in society, and we still live in a world rampant with disability. As you can see, this gentleman is missing three limbs, an arm and two legs. As a testimony to current prosthetic technology, he is out of the wheelchair. But as you can see, he still requires $100 crutches to walk, even though he's on $100,000 worth of prosthesis. We dream of a world in which a person with this level of condition can be fully rehabilitated with advanced bionics. As we march throughout this century, systematically, bionics will eliminate disability after disability, to the point where at the twilight years of this century, I predict that disability will be no more. To march towards that future world in which disability is no more, we have recently established the Center for Extreme Bionics with colleagues Edward Boyden, Joe Jacobson, and Robert Langer. The mission of the center is to advance the fundamental science and technology that will enable the broad biomechatronic and regenerative repair of humans across conditions affecting the brain and the body. Because of inadequate technology, each human condition results in a disability and a poorer quality of life than is sought. However, disability can be overcome through technological innovation. Bonex explores the interplay between biology and design. How does the human body work? Through a comprehensive understanding of human morphology and dynamics. Designers are better able to fabricate synthetic and biologic interventions for the mitigation of disability. Mathematical descriptions of neural mechanics are being developed by my group within the center. Here you see a mathematical description of a human walking, where the mathematics describe muscles and tendons and how muscles are controlled by neural reflexes in the spinal cord. These models are being used to motivate designs of bionic appendages that restore human physicality. Oh my God, I can't believe it! <laughs> it's just like I've got a, record, a real leg! Using these detailed models of the human, from the nano to the organismal scale, center investigators are advancing bionic platforms the first class of bionic intervention is input-output devices to the central brain that will enable a whole host of treatments for persons with brain and sensory conditions. Looking externally, the human brain is not terribly impressive. It's just a few pounds of ugly pink flesh. But we all know it mediates so much about what we are as human, what we experience, what we think, what we feel. And we also know that when we look inside, there's an extraordinary complexity. Billions of cells, billions of connections between cells. But what makes the brain so remarkable is there's so many distinct types of cells, tens of thousands of fundamentally different cells that do different things and talk to their neighbors in different ways. The approach to treat brain conditions has largely been pharmacological doping this very complex computer, the human brain, with a chemical with often unfavorable side effects. A key challenge of the brain scientist today is how to get information in and out of the brain, how to talk to individual cells, how to have tools that offer an extraordinary specificity. Optogenetics may provide such specificity. Center researcher Edward Boyden is one of the key architects of this new field of optogenetics that seeks to control brain cells via light. 
The cells in our brains, neurons, are densely wired in circuits. They compute using electricity. How can we control them? If we can control them, we can correct the neural patterns that go awry in brain disorders that affect over a billion people around the world. What we do is we equip these cells with little genetically encoded molecules that act like solar panels. They convert light into electrical signals. Then, when we shine light on the brain, light gets converted to electricity, we control the neurons, and that allows us to fix brain patterns and help potentially cure people with brain disorders. There are many extraordinary applications of optogenetics. My favorite is the treatment of seeing impairment. Here you see a mouse that's blind. The mouse, like your kitty cat at home, does not like to be in water, and it's trying to swim up a channel to climb onto a dry platform. Since it's blind, it's doing it through a brute force search by feeling the walls of this maze. After the optogenetic treatment, clearly the animal can now exploit visual information and it swims directly into the channel to get itself out of the water. The second class of bionic interventions being developed by center investigators is input-output devices to the peripheral nervous system, to nerves and to muscles. Here you see a person with limb amputation directly neurally controlling an external prosthetic limb. For decades, researchers have put surface electrodes on the body to measure the amount of electrical pulse in the muscle and then use that signal to control a limb. But this technique does not work very well. When a person sweats, for example, the signal decays and is not robust. What we have to do in the field of bionics is go into the body, develop neural implants that attach to nerve endings, and talk to nerves and muscles. How will we get information in and out of the body? Once we have these electronic modules on muscles and on nerve endings, how do we get that information out to a bionic appendage? And how do we get sensory information on the bionic appendage back into the nervous system? We're pursuing an approach called osseointegration. Here, a titanium shaft communicates from the outside the body and actually passes through the skin membrane into the skeleton. And we make the shaft hollow, and guess what? We run wires right into the nervous system from the external world. This allows exquisite high information rate, incredible efficiency communication between neural human information and external bionic appendages. So this is a cat that lost a limb, a hind limb. You can see a little cute prosthesis that's directly loading uh, the cat's skeleton mechanically. And again, electrically, we can run wires right through the conduit. A third class of bionic intervention pursued by center investigators is biometric body parts, synthetic bionic limbs that will restore natural movement function for persons with limb conditions. The goal of this aspect of the center is to design and fabricate bionic limbs that have the same mass, volume, and dynamics as their biological counterparts. Here you see a U.S. soldier, Steve Martin, not the comedian, running up a rocky path. Steve was hit by a bomb blast in Afghanistan and both of his limbs were ripped off. But with bionics, he's able to run up a rocky path with ease. Biometric body parts do not only help persons with lost limbs, but also persons with biological limbs where the limb doesn't work properly. This is the realm of orthoses or exoskeletons, where the exoskeleton adds structure and support and control to the biological limb, such that the biological limb plus the synthetic limb together produce natural movements. Here you see a person running with an exoskeleton in a freeing and powering way. A fourth bionic intervention being developed by the center is regenerative body parts. The idea here is can we grow organs and repair biological structures by engineering cells and tissues. 
One of my favorite projects in this area of regenerative medicine is being advanced by center investigator Robert Langer. Here you see a mouse with a transected spinal cord. You see, of course, significant paralysis in the hind limbs. What Robert Langer and colleagues have done is to build a polymer scaffold and to inject that scaffold with neural stem cells. Here you see a mouse with a transected spinal cord after receiving this intervention where you can clearly see a remarkable restoration of motor movement patterns. I am happy to report that this extraordinary regenerative technology is now being applied to humans. Only very recently, the first human being received the treatment. Here you see this individual who was to be completely paralyzed below the waist without this technology, exhibiting walking patterns. This individual has regained bowel function, has regained movement at the knee and hip. Extraordinary. With financial support, MIT's Center for Extreme Bionics will advance the fundamental science and technology that will enable the repair of humans across a broad spectrum of conditions affecting the mind and body. And through these advancements, ultimately, one day leading to an end of disability. What makes the center so extraordinary is its multifaceted, multidisciplinary character. In the center, we have tissue engineering, mechatronics, machine learning, genetics, synthetic biology. We brought this all together with top world-class researchers to inform future bionic designs. Can we do for these complex problems of the body, these diseases, what has empowered so much of the 20th century in terms of landing on the moon and making computers work and having the internet and so forth. I dream of a world where disability is no more. Today, here and now, imagine this future world. Dream with me. Thank you.